And Sandra was talking earlier about matriculation. Okay? And a student needs to be matriculated in order to be eligible to enroll. So if a student hasn't been matriculated yet, this would say no. It would also say no if they have not yet done what's called term activation. Okay? This is something that the registrar's office does um, so far not as early as we'd like, but they're working out a timeline. Um, they do it, like for this spring, they did it near the beginning of fall. And probably for fall, they will term activate, for next fall, they will term activate students near the beginning of spring because that's when they then become eligible to enroll. That's when all this stuff for a place to put classes, that's when their student advising sign-up screen, which you'll see tomorrow, shows up so you can then clear them for that next semester. Okay? So until their term activated, there's nothing there for that student for that upcoming semester. So if you're looking to clear them and there's not a screen there yet for that upcoming semester, it could be that they're not term activated. Now occasionally you will see, um, you know, everything looks fine for a student. They've got their measles immunization in, there's no holds, everything looks fine, and they're calling you saying, I can't register. Why can't I not register? What's going on? And you're like, oh my god, I don't know. Check here, okay, because this is not something, um, this is, if it says no, that's going to block them. I'm saying this kind of out of order. I apologize. Anyway, eligible to enroll means just those two things. It means they've been term activated, and it means they have been matriculated. This student may still have holds. If this student has an academic advising hold, or they need to file their declaration of graduation, or something else, they may still be eligible to enroll but they are not, they're being held from enrolling. Okay, so you see the difference. So if they are being blocked and all the other holds are gone, check here to see if it says yes or no. If it says yes, then we have to look for You won't see, you don't need to look at this constantly. This is not a feature you have to look at a lot. It's just that it's a troubleshooting feature. If a student says, everything looks right, and you look at the enrollment program, appointment and you're scratching your head and you're going, what's going on? Look here, because um, it, might be. it might be a no within it. And then if it is, just contact the registrar's office and just say, hey, it looks like everything's fine for the student, but I notice eligible enroll, it says no. They'll verify it and then they'll switch it over and turn it on and change it to yes. And the student will be on his merry way to be able to enroll for classes. Screen also shows, can show you the history semester by semester of the classes that the student took and the statistics from that semester, their GPA from that term, and then their cumulative GPA at that time. Okay. This is where you, one place where you can see the student's academic status. So if you're wondering if they're on probation or disqualified or hopefully in good standing. This is stamped on the student at the end of the semester. So you can see 2006 spring. This is a date from, well, this is when we converted the data. But if you go back here, <laughs> you'll see she was in good standing at the end of the term. Okay. So if you're wanting to know if a student is on probation for, you know, during the fall semester, you have to go back to spring and see what it was at the end of that term. And do be aware that, um, the academic standing is run at the end of fall and at the end of spring, so these will not change at the end of winter or of summer. 